Welcome back. As we promised, we are going to continue covering Egypt 2020, this uh, economic conference which kicked off yesterday as it was inaugurated by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. The President and Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli had very important speeches in front of the uh, inaugural session of the gathering. The gathering is um, or attracted already large numbers of um, academics, professors, um, economic experts. All of this, uh, all uh, uh, these people are gathered to to find a roadmap to find solutions this is a big think tank brainstorming sessions were there to face the current crises well to shed more light on this we are very much delighted to have with us via phone ambassador Gamal Bayoumi former assistant foreign minister and our economic expert a very good morning to you ambassador good Bayoumi. morning good morning how are you I'm fine sir thank you sir this is a very important gathering and the economic conference uh, comes at a time where the whole world is suffering from uh, the uh, negative repercussions of the global crises. Of course, we know what happened um, uh, in two years and maybe a little bit more than that with the COVID-19. And from the 24th of February since the uh, Russian military operation in Ukraine. Now, what we are doing is to confess, to admit that we do have uh, an economic crisis or economic problems as the whole world does but also um, today we can say that transparency is a key word that we are facing our problems that we are thinking out of the box with the many messages which were sent during the two speeches whether by the president or by the prime minister if you please sir I'd like you to elaborate on that we are in the middle of a very important process that uh, Egypt always is seeking to have its economic development uh, mm. process, and we have our plan for 2030. Uh, and we, we were lucky, uh, relatively, because we started this process uh, since 2016. Uh, our uh, big reform was uh, uh, currency reform also. So when the epidemic of corona came, then the war in Ukraine came. We were already on strong feet facing this. So although the whole world is suffering, most of the economies, the big economies in the Americas, in Europe, in China, they are diminishing, not, in, not uh, developing. There are five countries, only five countries in the whole world. Egypt is among them which is still making economic de uh, de uh, growth uh, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And our prime minister said yesterday it is almost s more than 6%. This is good, but not enough because we uh, uh, are keen to make it 8% uh, even more because we have the birth rate also is getting higher and higher. And who is I am? Uh, joking about uh, that we have since the revolution of 2011 up till now 25 new citizens. This is as big as two times Greece. Uh, so this is a, a sort of challenge. We have to accept it and we have to work for it. Yes. And Another this is... thing. No, yes, please. sure. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry for the interruption, sir. Go ahead. No, as a matter of fact, we, the, 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 this sort of uh, meeting, it is very important to us also, and I am happy to watch it, because most of the experts are talking a language which we understand, uh, and I hear insist that they have to talk to our people to, to make sure that every citizen is satisfied with uh, our efforts, is uh, understanding what we are doing yes because it's much important than having a good policy to have the appropriate policy mm -hmm. where everybody is uh, keen to accept it and to help it because the belief in your economy is one way to make it stronger because if you do not believe in your own currency then it will be deteriorated immediately if you permit me, sir, um, of course, um, the speeches of the president were very important and, as usual, filled with figures, statistics. 
um, um, I don't know how he, he really um, um, learned by heart all these numbers in all uh, aspects. Um, well, also, uh, Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli even uh, used some um, cartoons which were published maybe 40 or 50 years ago to speak about the situation in Egypt before and after. All this is great, but I, I'd like, if you permit me, to go to the, uh, to the sessions or the roundtable discussions with the attendance of experts or academics, as you've kindly mentioned, they were there to represent different aspects, different sides of the coin. And they spoke about food insecurity, for example, about how to maintain the stability of our economic policies and uh, uh, its importance, and about the importance also of full coordination among concerned bodies. How do you see those two elements in specific? Very important, and we, we, we have to understand where we are, what we are doing, what we accept to do, because it's a matter of sacrifice uh, relatively from every one of us for the sake of the whole country and as I said it is not a matter to find solutions because really our problems are very simple we have uh, uh, to attract more direct investment we have to face the need of more finance mm -hmm. we have a, a, a sort of problem with our uh, budget we have to uh, make it uh, relatively stable and uh, our Minister of uh, uh, Finance Dr. Mohamed Mu'ayt Mohamed Mu'ayt explain always how we are fixing our budget mm -hmm. and the solution are in the books it's not that we need uh, uh, international experience or some something uh, uh, unusual all the solutions are written in the books. If you have a problem and a deficit in your budget, you have to spend less and you have to put more taxing. But amazing that uh, in, in experiences which I lived uh, here and there in the world, that take for Germany in the 80s, they were facing a deficit of 40 billion demark. And instead of imposing more taxing, they make the, the taxes less to encourage investors to more and more investment and to create more and more uh, jobs. And by the way, by that time, the government of Helmut Schmidt, uh, Schmidt fall because they were uh, not agreeing with, with each other about this policy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the solution and the... the uh, opposite of the same solution can uh, bring you to good position. Mm -hmm. Then it's not the solution, it's not the theory. Solutions and theories are in the books. Here we have to take what I call always a, a political decision, mm -hmm. which can attract the majority of the people uh, uh, to believe in it and to help the story to be a successful one. This is what we are doing now, trying to uh, agree and have what I call national consensus yes. about what we have to do. Amen then to that. we start to do it with agreement with the majority of the people. Then solutions are in the books, but to implement them on the ground, this requires thinking out of the box, if you permit me to say so. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I, I, I want to make it easy because as Bernard Shaw, if an economist talks to you and you do not understand what he's saying, this means that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Economy is a very simple uh, question and it is in the mind and uh, as you said, whether you... Being you, that you, simple as you said. Exactly. Uh, uh, of course, it's not that simple, by the way. Um, some very clear statements were released in front of all cameras by the CBE governor, by Mr. Hassan Abdullah. He said it that way. Our main mission is to curb inflation or to control inflation. This is our main issue right now. As if he is telling the Egyptians and telling 
all the concerned bodies, all the concerned experts that do not expect something to come prior to that for me as a CBE governor. How do you see this statement, sir? Here is a simple uh, problem. If you have a headache, take a couple of aspirin. No. <laughs> but uh, we know that what is inflation? Inflation is, in the French definition, is simple. It is a, a lot of money with less goods. So mm. you have to produce more goods and to make good use of the money. Mm -hmm. Here, we, we, to, to pull the money, to bring the money from the market, make it more useful, you raise the rate of interest. Mm -hmm. And you have to produce more and more to bring commodities in the market to face the increase in the money. Yeah. So it, it is as simple as that. How you do this? This is the politics. This is the policy. This is the whole issue. This is the whole issue. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to do it carefully to make your people understand and to believe in what you are doing. The word believe As is if very you are walking on a robe. I mean, yep. this needs such a balanced way of thinking. But sir, if you permit me to continue with the statements which were said by uh, uh, the CBE government, because they were very important, at least in my humble opinion, he um, also spoke about the, uh, the Egyptian pound, the currency, and he said, do not... Um, have this kind of comparison or um, our, our Egyptian pound is not tied with the dollar. We are thinking of uh, um, uh, holding a, a new basket of currencies a little bit far from the dollar because this is the situation we do live in. We are practical enough to confess that and to admit that on the ground. How do you see this, sir, also? I see that we uh, fell in a, a sort of a common min misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. we, we, we fell in love suddenly with the dollar. <laughs> and we fell in love with having a strong uh, Egyptian pound. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the world is trying to impose strong currency. The whole world, especially the American and the European Union and Japan, are complaining that uh, China, which is the, the largest exporter in the world, is maintaining a policy to make its currency weaker. Mm -hmm. Because the currency, mm -hmm. when it is weaker, then your uh, exports became cheaper. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I, I lived myself in, in many countries where the, the rate of currency is jumping. And uh, I give you, I, when I went to Brazil, in the 70s, a dollar was uh, equal to five cruzeros. Mm -hmm. I left to where a dollar was 15 cruzeros. Ten years later, I was talking to a friend in Brazil, asking about the rate now. He said it is 160,000 cruzeros. Mm -hmm. Nearer example, I, I made my first visit to Beirut. That was in the 70s also. And uh, I could buy uh, two, two liters and a half for a dollar. Mm -hmm. Then Lebanon invited me to a lecture in December 19. I found that it is 1,500 liters. Yeah. Do you know the rate now? It is 30, 35,000 liters for a dollar. And Unfortunately. Lebanon and, and is living... They, of course, they have a problem, uh, but it, we shouldn't exaggerate about the rate of ex exchange. Mm -hmm. Here, another story also, because we, uh, uh, we have to coordinate between our financial uh, policies and our exchange rate policies. Mm -hmm. It means that there must be a sort of coordination mm -hmm. between the policies of the Central Bank of Egypt and the, the Ministry of finance mm -hmm. without meeting each other because the central bank of egypt is a sort of arbitrator he has to watch what's going on in the market and make the right uh, policy and the right decision to face the problem yeah he, he, here it is and I, I i want also to entertain you telling you that that was 
the exam for us when I was trying to join the Central Bank of Egypt in 1960. They asked us how you are going to uh, act financially and how you are going to act in the sort of exchange rate if you are facing uh, a deficit, if you are facing a problem of... Uh, 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 so since you have been, uh, you, right. you have passed all these tests, so this is exactly what made you who you are right now, our diplomatic figure <laughs> and our economic expert. Thank you. I mean, Thank this you. is something which um, I'm not surprised to hear this from you, sir. If you permit me, I'm, I'm going to uh, return back to my favorite question when I am honored to have you, the SMEs. Because this was also one of the issues which uh, was uh, discussed yesterday in many uh, sessions, um, by the way. And you spoke about the importance of SMEs and the importance of the government's efforts, which should be exerted more and more on the ground to make it easier for them to eradicate bureaucracy, to make it easier to get licenses, to make it easier to finish all their procedures without uh, um, being uh, forced to uh, deal with many um, uh, governmental bodies, make it that easier for them because they can play a greater and a bigger role in developing our economy in many fields, if not in all fields. How do you see this? Here is another thing we have to uh, understand it and we have to defend the, the right culture about it because uh, Egyptians are uh, pyramids builders so we we like big and mammoth projects this is okay but uh, countries are developed with the small and very small uh, uh, private project mm. take Germany Germany became the, the largest exporter of the world in 2009 and by that time a, a professor in the in, in uh, the, the berlin uh, university came to lecture us telling us that although germany became the largest exporter in 2009 80 percent of, of what germany is exporting is coming from companies we don't know their names even mm -hmm. It's not the, the, the Siemens or Mercedes or whatever. No, it is a small and tiny project. Yes. Here always I uh, give the example of Damietta. If you go in the small streets in, in Damietta, you will find that everyone has his own small carpenting shop or uh, electricity or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this is a culture in the industrialized countries the small and very small uh, uh, projects. I am for this also because this will encourage our young generation not to wait to be an employee in the government uh, system. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start your own project? And uh, if you look around yourself, you'll, you'll find many courageous uh, young gentlemen started small projects like that. Sure. Whether it is to, to produce something, to maintain something, to whatever his job can be. Yeah. And I want here to, to bring to all the minds what I call the Damietta culture, where my grandfather uh, uh, told us it is a shame if you go to work for the government. Mm -hmm. You don't work for the government, work for yourself, produce by yourself. So this is the, the, the idea about a small and medium-sized uh, industries. And uh, their importance in all um, economies. Here, yeah. I'm speaking about all economies, whether developed or developing, whether emerging markets exactly. or emerging economies or developed ones. As usual, I enjoyed my discussion uh, with you, sir. Thank you. Um, have a very good day, and we are going to leave you with a promise to, uh, to have you again and again in our Inshallah. programs, as you are really Thank an you. added value to our screen. We were very much delighted to have with us via phone Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister and our economic expert. Right after the short break, we are going to turn back with my dear colleague and friend Amal Mukhtar to continue with discussing the important gathering, the Egyptian, uh, the Egyptian Economy Conference or Egypt 2022.